Hello, welcome to Cooking and Storing with Dan and Wayne. Today I'm down here at our medium freeze dryer. And when we first got this, we've had it, I don't know, two, three weeks now. When we first installed it, we did the vacuum test. We got below 500. We didn't know to let it keep running until we, it bottomed out. We didn't know that. We got down to 460 something and the manual says below 500. So we're good and we stopped. But when we run our first batch, our bread run, it failed with a vacuum leak. And since then, I've done a lot of research. I've learned a lot of things. We've tried different things. And today I'm going to tell you what we have done, some uh, tips that may help you, uh, a few things that may be a permanent fix, a few things that may help you to identify where your vacuum leaks are at. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the hose that goes from your pump, which ours is right here, over to your machine. And uh, I've already had this loose, so it normally it would be tighter than that. As you can see, I got some Teflon tape on here. Uh, we did that because we were told that that could help. At this point, with the research that I've done, I'm a firm believer that that Teflon tape has absolutely no bearing on whether you have a vacuum leak or not. And I'll explain why here in just a few minutes. But at this point, I'm going to take the hose off. I'm going to show you some close-up views and explain to you why I feel that way. Now I'm going to start with this thing, uh, the hose that goes from your, uh, the appliance itself to the pump, and I'm going to explain why I personally don't think the Teflon tape on those threads is going to help you any at all. Um, if you look inside this thing, uh, I don't know if the camera is going to focus on that or not, but if there's a vacuum leak with this, it means it's already getting past the O-ring. Now if you look at this, see that slop right there? Now that's normal, that's not a defect. But that right there, if you got a vacuum leak, that's where it's going to be, right in here. Not necessarily up at the threads. Now if you put Teflon tape on those threads, it may seal the threads, but it doesn't seal this back here in this area. And that's where you're going to lose your vacuum, back here, if that O-ring doesn't seal properly. It's not going to come out through the threads if you put the Teflon tape on there, but it will still come out here. So I, I firmly believe that that Teflon tape is not going to do you any good. But what we're going to do, and I think this will help, and uh, inside here there's a little O-ring. Here again, I hope the camera will focus on that. I'm not sure if it does or not. But there's a little black O-ring in here. Anytime you got this hose off, make sure you look at that O-ring Make sure it looks like it's in good shape. If it's got a little nick in it, if it's got dirt on it, it's likely going to cause you a vacuum error. What we're going to start doing anytime we've got this hose off, we're going to take a little bit of the oil that we have for our vacuum pump and just a dab, just a little bit on that O-ring. And also the fitting on the side of the appliance and on the pump. We're going to put just a little film of that oil there. Now this oil is not going to hurt your food. It is a food grade kind of oil. And I really believe that if that O-ring is leaking, that little bit of oil will help stop that leak. So that's what we're going to do in this area. Now at this point, I put a little fine film of oil here, real fine film of oil in there on my O-ring. And I'm going to hook it up. Now another thing that I want to show you here is when you got it almost tight, back off just a little bit, and what I want you to do, see how this kind of will wiggle? Don't just let it settle down and tighten things up. You want to pull back on the hose and straight out and kind of wiggle it a little as you tighten it down easy. That will help ensure that that O-ring is seated good and centered where it's supposed to be. And that also will assist in reducing vacuum airs in that area. After you tighten it down good and tight by hand, take some pliers and do that. Now you can probably see I didn't turn that much at all, uh, but I think that's all it's going to take. Now some people, getting back to the Teflon tape deal, some people will tell you when you do the Teflon tape, you also start up here and wrap down here with Teflon tape and they do the um, self-sealing Teflon tape or something. If you got a leak from here, that might would help you. But because of the knurling and this kind of zigzaggy pattern here, that's called a knurled uh, 
coating on that, it's hard to seal when you're against, against that. So if you try to wrap all this in Teflon tape, I just don't believe you'll get a good seal. You might, but I think the odds are against it. I think a little bit of oil on those O-rings, make sure they're good and straight when you put them in there, tighten them down as tight as you can by hand, and just a little bit more of some pliers. I think that'll go a long ways toward preventing a vacuum leak in that area. Now there's another thing I want to mention while I'm in this area about the vacuum pump. It's not, it doesn't really affect your vacuum airs, but it does the pump. And I just want a little quick tip here. If you need to move your pump around, don't hold on to this to move it because this thing is plastic where it threads in and you can break it. You know, so anytime you need to move your pump, hold on to this if it's not too hot. Best if you hold a handle if you're going to move your pump around. And another thing, when you take this off, Never turn it upside down. Always keep it like this when you take it off. The reason for that, this demister tends to uh, get oil in it. That's part of what it does. That's part of its job. And if you turn it upside down, that oil can get in the wrong place and it can cause fogging in your room. So if you take your demister off, always keep it sitting upright. Don't turn it upside down. All right, now let's move on to our drain valve, which is, I think, where our main problem came from. Now, right quick before we move on, I'd just like to say, if you find this video useful, uh, please do us a favor and click like on the video, subscribe to our channel, and uh, share it with your friends. Share the video with your friends. If they have uh, freeze dryers, it may help them with their problems as well. So uh, now let's move on to our hints and tips about the drain valve. Now, if you think your problem is with your drain valve, which is right here being your problem, with the compressor running and pulling vacuum, you can put your finger over the end of the hose. If it's leaking much, you'll feel vacuum coming in there. I don't have any right now, but you can also <clears throat> take a bottle of water. And put your hose down here. Now, if you do this, watch your hose very carefully because you don't want to, if you've got a bad vacuum leak, you don't want to suck all this water into your vacuum chamber. But if you put your hose down in there, if this, is, if this valve is leaking, it'll start pulling water up that hose. If you don't see it pulling water up that hose, that vacuum or that valve is not leaking. Now, we do know at times our valve leaks. Sometimes it doesn't. Right now, it's not. But I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyway because I know it has given us trouble. But right now, with this test, I know our valve is not leaking. But like I said, I'm going to replace it anyway. Now to remove your drain valve, you got to unscrew this part from that part. And you need wrenches to hold both pieces to twist them off. You don't want to just try and twist this because you're twisting your pipe. So I'm going to use two uh, crescent wrenches here. Now the next thing we want to do is all this Teflon tape's got to come off of here. Sometimes it can be a little bit aggravating. A uh, wire brush can help. A good pointy item of some sort can help, but you got to get all that old Teflon tape off. I like using my pocket knife, but uh, use whatever you got. But just know you got to get all that Teflon tape off to get started. Now in my case, uh, I went to a local big box store and I bought this valve, which is used for uh, gas pipelines, like for propane or natural gas. And uh, I think it'll be a much better quality valve. Uh, I'll install it so that that way is off, that's on. It wouldn't matter if I did it this way, but I just like it better that when it's pointing that way, it's. Uh, is open to let the vacuum release. Now, when you if you hadn't ever done Teflon tape before, there's a right and a wrong way to do Teflon tape. You got to wrap it if you're looking at the end of the pipe clockwise, because when this screws on, 
it goes clockwise. If your Teflon tape is the wrong screwed the, is on the wrong direction, when this is uh, threading on, it'll back that tape up and it won't seal as well. So your tape needs to go the same direction that the fitting threads on to. Now I'm being all thumbs here because this is a bad angle for me, but uh, we'll get this on here. So I might just pull me a piece off and wrap it. Go around it several times. Go at least three or four times around. I've lost track of where I'm at. So I'm going to stop right there. Like that. Now make sure your Teflon tape doesn't extend past the end of the pipe because it can get in the pipe. But at this point, I want to take my fit, my new valve, and just thread it on. <clears throat> and then I want to take my wrenches and tighten it up. That should be tight enough. And there we are. That opens it to release the vacuum. That closes it to hold the vacuum in. So there we go. Now, our little plug that's at the end, we had previously removed this and retaped it. So we've got Teflon tape here too. We'll take that te Teflon tape off and we'll seal it back up the same way. So there we have it. I put a link to where I purchased the valve as well as the Teflon tape. And like I said, that's closed, that's open, that lets the, releases the vacuum, that makes it hold vacuum. And um, I've also noticed people that talk about this fitting right here and that that fitting cannot cause a vacuum leak. Anything past this cutoff valve it's not going to affect your vacuum leak. Um, if, the vac if the valve is leaking, this doesn't matter because this tube is still open at the end. So that, fit, that fitting right there, it doesn't matter if you put Teflon tape on it at all, or even if you leave this part off, it's not going to affect the vacuum whether you hold it or leak it. It doesn't matter. So the Teflon tape really doesn't matter here. Uh, but I put some back on there just because. But make sure you got a good quality valve Make sure you use uh, Teflon tape rated for gas pipelines. And like I said, I'll put links in the descriptions to where you can purchase this. Now for my last couple of tips for your freeze dryer uh, vacuum airs. You saw me take my vacuum, my old uh, vacuum relief, uh, pressure relief valve off. Um, I'm going to show a picture up here in the corner of what the ball valve inside my old uh, valve looks like. And it's rusty. And with that ball valve being rusty, there's no way it's going to give you a good seal long term. Now, one thing that we did to get us through doing some batches, and I think we've done 10, 12, 14 batches at this point, but it was constantly giving us trouble. But what we would do to get past that, we would take the oil that goes in the vacuum pump and we put just a couple drops inside here where that ball valve is at. We'd work it back and forth a few times and then we would continue the job and usually it would seal for a while. But after you know, a few times of opening and closing it to drain your water and things, it would not seal well again. So you know, that's not a permanent fix, it's a temporary fix, but it may get you past uh, getting, you know, getting the job finished up until you can get the proper parts to finish it, to repair the job. So even if you got a new machine, don't expect that this is a good valve because ours already has rust on it and we've only had this thing a couple of weeks so a little disappointed there but we've got a new valve now and that should fix it now the next thing i want to talk about is you know make sure that the inside of your glass here is good and clean 
And if you haven't, particularly if you're having vacuum problems, take your rubber seal off and wash it good with cold water. So get, particularly get in between the, the groove on the back, wash the front of it good, and don't wipe it down with any kind of a towel, paper towel, dish rag, or nothing like that. Just let it air dry. If you want to rush it up, you know, just put it back on wet. If you want to dry it down, make sure you use something that's lint free. Because even a little bit of lint on here that you don't even hardly see uh, can cause enough of a vacuum leak to cause your mTORs not to go low like you want them to. You may still get what looks like a good seal around here, but a little bit of air can get through. And it doesn't take much getting through to cause problems. This is our test for freezing and vacuum after 20 minutes. As you can see, our freeze is at minus 74 degrees Fahrenheit after 50 minutes. And uh, mTORs are at 238 after 20 minutes. And it's still creeping down some. It has not really stabilized yet. I'd just like to say at this point, um, let us know if you like this, if you have any comments, things we can add. You know, your comments and suggestions not only tell us, but it can also help other people viewing this video that have vacuum errors. So don't hesitate to tell us what you did. If you got questions, ask us your questions. We'll do our best to answer them. And uh, we just like to say uh, we appreciate you visiting here with uh, Cooking and Storing with Ann and Wayne. And we hope you have a great day.